Now it's recording. Right, okay, so uh, question one. Write down this list, the list that results at the end of the first pass through bubble sort. Have I missed part of the question up here? Oh yeah, oh no, we haven't got the numbers. I've missed half the question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, not a good start. Okay, the question is said. Oh dear. The numbers were 15, 7, 9, 26, 10, 4. This is brought to you by Matt's day, but need professional perfection. Um, right, write down the results at the end of the first pass through the bubble sort. Uh, so that after the completion of the first pass, the largest value will be the right end of the list. Write down the number of comparisons and number of swaps. So we want to sort it uh, into ascending order, so starting with the smallest number. So um, we'll, we'll do the bubble sort. I might actually do it on another page so I can flip between them. So this was, you were given the list to start with. You can say, no, there's no, there's no kind of complete need for us to, to write down every single thing that we're doing with this. Uh, we are asked to record the number of comparisons and swap, so I'm going to do a little tally as I do it. Uh, remember how the bubble sort works. The bubble starts at the beginning of our list and considers those two numbers and sorts them, rearranging them if necessary. They would swap, so we go with a uh, 7 and a 15, and then we bring the 9 down, and we're going to look at those two. Do they need to swap? Oh, so hang on, let's record what we're doing. Let's do it. So we've just done a comparison, and it resulted in a swap. So now we're looking at 15 and 9. That's another comparison, and that results in a swap. We bring down the 26. Swap that. So we're going to look at the 15 and 26. So that's another comparison. But they don't swap, do they? Because they're already in the right order. So we now bring down the 10. So we look at the 26 and 10. Um, that that what have I done with? Oh yeah, I didn't need to swap that there, so the 15 is still there. Uh, so that is going to be another comparison, and that does need to swap. So we go 10, 26, 4, so that's a swap. And then we look at 26 and 4, that's another comparison, and they would need to swap. So that was a swap as well. Uh, the question says, write down the list as it appears, 7, 9, 15, 10, 4, 26. Uh, so we can. <laughs> How many comparisons and swaps? Uh, five comparisons. comparisons. Is that right? And four swaps. So there we go. So that's uh, all the marks for that. That was three marks. Um, then the question said, we need to go back to this bit, don't we? Uh, after three passes, the list is given there. Write down the list that results at the end of the fourth pass to the bubble sort. Write down the number of comparisons and the number of swaps that were made in this pass. So, as we go to part two, uh, the starting list of part two for this fourth pass 7, 9, 4, 10, 15, 26. We're going to record comparisons and swaps again. Now, remember what happens with this, the bubble sort. Every time you do a bubble sort, one of the numbers is placed in the correct position. So the first pass to the bubble sort placed 26 in the correct position. The second pass placed 15. The third pass placed the number 10. Okay? Uh, after three passes, this is what the list looks like. So those three numbers must have been in the correct places. So the fourth pass begins with comparing 7 and 9, that's one comparison, it wouldn't result in a swap. And then it compares 9 and 4, that's the second comparison that would result in a swap. And that's a stopped, because because we already knew that the others were in the correct positions. So at the end of that pass, the list was 7, 4, 9, 10, 15, 26, and we knew that those four numbers, four pass, fourth pass of four numbers, were in the correct place. We did two comparisons and one swap. Now, where, where this went wrong for a few of you was that you 
didn't realise that we were already in the threat position with those numbers, so we carried on doing comparisons. Along the Does that make sense? You ended up with too many comparisons uh, for what the swap, what, for what the, um, the stage was involved. Okay, part three. How many comparisons are needed in total to sort the list? Using bubbles. That's just the sound of bubbles rising through the list. Um, right, so, uh, so what, we, what we're thinking, well, uh, in total, the bubble sort, um, it, it, it only, we only finish early with the bubble sort if we end up doing a, a pass that would result in no swaps early. You know, if, if kind of, this is four passes. The fifth pass, the final pass of this, would involve comparing those, and that would be it. Once we compare those, we know that everything is in the right. So we're going to do the full quota. So the first time through the list, we had five comparisons, because we had six numbers. <coughs> the second time through the list, we had four comparisons, then three, then we just had two in that one there, and the final run three would involve one comparison. Um, and so that's the total. And 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus, two plus 1 is 15. So we had a total of 15. Um, from doing that. Okay? The, uh, the bubble sort is pretty consistent with that, because the only way you would get less than, than that kind of pattern, that, that number, is if you had a whole pass early that resulted in no swaps. And we've just seen that that didn't happen with this list, so it's a full complement. Okay, part four. Now, uh, mixed up a little bit, part four said shuttle sort is then used to sort the original list into increasing the start at the left hand end of the list. Write down the list that results at the end of the first pass through shuttle sort. Write down the number of comparisons and the number of swaps that were made in this pass. So, uh, for part four, we're now back to our original list, which is given there as 15. You had it in your answer book, but now shuttle sort is different, isn't it? Because shuttle sort, you just go once through the, the list. It's like it almost feels like it's one pass and a bubble sort all in one go. So the first pass, all that you do is compare the first and second numbers. That's it. So we compare the 15 and 7 and sort them if necessary. And they would need to sort. That's it, end of first pass. So at the end of the first pass, the list is 7, 15, 9, 26, 10, 4. That was one comparison and one swap. Okay, the shuttle sort, you start at the beginning and you just can work your way through shuffling things back into place. Then the question set. Um, after three passes, the list is given as 7, 9, 15, 26, 10, 4. It's the same <coughs> kind of field, a similar field that we had earlier. They're giving it a point partly through. And then it says, write down the list that results at the end of the fourth pass to the shuttle sort. So, after the third pass, the list said 7, 9, 15, 26, 10, 4. Now, I think that the challenge here is working at how we pick up on this. So we're now going to do the fourth pass. So the first pass compared, compared first and second. The second pass compared second and third. The third pass was third and fourth. So the fourth pass is going to start by the mean <coughs> at the fourth and fifth numbers. That's where we look at the start of the fourth pass. And swap them if necessary. So 26 and 10 would swap. And then you shuffle back through the list. So that was a comparison, a comparison and a swap. So the 10 is swapped. You now compare the 10 with the 15 and swap if necessary. They would swap. That's a comparison and a swap. So you compare 10 with 9 and swap if necessary. They wouldn't swap. And because they didn't swap, you know that you've finished that part of the process. You don't need to compare them. That one could be made no change to that. 
So that was three comparisons and two swaps. So the list at the end of the third, at the end of the fourth pass was seven, nine, 10, 15, 26, four. And there were three comparisons and two swaps. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, as I've been doing this, at every stage, even though I've done a little tally here, I've then written the number of comparisons and swaps. And that's important because they will not accept your number of comparisons and swaps as a tally. They will only accept it as a number. So if you did it as a tally, you didn't get the mark for doing it. Part six. And still it goes on. Um, how many comparisons and how many swaps are made in the fifth pass? They didn't ask you to do the fifth pass. They just asked you how many comparisons and swaps you made. So that was the fourth pass. Well, um, the crucial thing about the fifth pass is that that number four is the smallest number in the list. So that number four, which is currently at the end of the list, is going to end up at the start of the list. So this means, when we're asked how many comparisons and swaps, we must be comparing and swapping everything as we go through the list. So you almost don't have to think your way through it. You could work it out. But because that's the smallest number and it's got to end up here, there must be five comparisons and five swaps. Every time we do a comparison, it's going to result in a swap, isn't it? To get to that start. Um, and the last part of the question said, in sorting the original list, both method, methods use a total of nine swaps. That's, that's always true, isn't it? They always use the same number of swaps because it's the same list from start to end point. Which of the two methods is the most efficient to sort of the list? Support your answer with a reason. Okay. Um, so in all of what we've done there, um, what, what we're going to end up with as our conclusion for this, well, I think we've, we've got to kind of come up with some reasoning for doing it. But what do we think? What is the most efficient way? That it was, well, we saw an example of what happens with it. The, the shuttle sort, the bubble sort we saw, did the whole thing, didn't it? It did the full work all the way through. We had um, the maximum number of comparisons that we could expect to get because it didn't stop it. So that was the bubble sort. The shuttle sort, we already saw that uh, we had fewer than we might have expected comparisons. Um, some of the, the runs through this stopped early, didn't they? So we're going to say the shuttle sort and it ends up having fewer comparisons. Now I'm just I'm just looking, I got my answers that I did when I did this um, last year the day of the exam. And I was just kind of remembering from having marked it. Oh, okay, well, I, I would have got it. Yeah, I said shuttle sort. What I actually said was it would use fewer comparisons. Now, I went on a little bit with this. So I wrote quite a long answer. So it would use fewer comparisons because some of the passes stop early, whereas bubble sort will use the maximum number of comparisons. Um, Some passive could stop early, that should say. Whereas bubble uses the maximum number. Uh, they did they didn't mind. I was I was wondering whether they actually cared about the number here. Um, I, they just wanted shuttle sort and the reason that you just it actually uses 12 comparisons, uh, if you do it correctly. Um, and some people worked out that it uses 12. But it, you just needed to say it uses 12. 
There we go. At least one person lost a, a number of marks through doing tallies instead of numbers, so remember that in future. I didn't, I didn't say that, and that's maths. <laughs>